Welcome back everyone. We're going to start a series on TEC efficiency. Now, before we start, I have used the words TEC intentionally, not TEG and not Peltier, because we're talking about thermoelectric cooling in this. Now, people will constantly tell you that TECs are between 2 to 10% efficient. And this is always yanked my chain because this is not based on any actual facts this is based on basically someone has said it or performed an incredibly poor test there is a wildly bad test on YouTube with someone trying to cool some water in a can it's just the test is so bad it's not funny and if you've watched my videos on water block design you should hopefully be able to pick up some of the obvious problems they made in that test but this statement that TECs are about 10% efficient is rubbish. Now I was going to do a single video on TEC efficiency, but I quickly realized that this video was going to become two hours, and looking at my video stats, no one actually watches a two-hour video. Uh, and also I realized that the problem with the word efficiency is that in my regular life outside of the internet if you like people seem to completely and utterly misunderstand what efficiency actually is and therefore they incorrectly apply that to TECs so we really need to start right at the beginning with the conservation of energy believe it or not and then move on to what efficiency is not and then what it is and then talk about co-op and what on earth that is and then we can start talking about TEC efficiency. Now, I'd like to just throw in a quick note here that on my Facebook page, we have a, a sticky which says what videos are upcoming and what people really want. So you can see what's coming up in the future from there. Right, back to TEC efficiency. Like I said, the word C for cooling is very important. So we're going to start at the beginning with the law of conservation of energy. Now this is a law and as far as I know this has never been broken. There is no such thing as free energy or at least if it has happened it's been suppressed by the oil companies if you're into those kind of um, conspiracy theories. Uh, but in short conservation of energy is this. Energy does not come from nothing, and neither does it disappear. It is only ever transformed between two different forms of energy. Okay? It's, this is important to know later on. Not much more to say to that. You can look up conservation of energy. You'll find a whole bunch of uh, videos or uh, wikis about conservation of energy. So essentially it is, if you put uh, I know, petrol in your car, all the energy which is in uh, the petrol does not disappear. It turns into kinetic energy, which makes the wheels go round, it turns into some noise, it turns into an awful lot of heat, but it doesn't disappear. So let's now take a look at three easy, in my opinion, uh, electrical devices to talk about. Now, electrical devices are, in my opinion, the easiest to talk about when it comes to conservation of energy, uh, efficiency, and co-op, because they're very easy to measure. You, it's a tangible amount of energy going in for you to measure, because it's the energy going in is what's getting pulled from the wall socket. So on a light bulb, you, you plug your light bulb into the wall. That's supposed to be a plug, I guess. We'll give it a switch. Same with your heater. You plug that in to the wall. Your TEC, you plug into some kind of power box, DC power box, which looks random, but anyway. So with a 100 watt heater, all the power that goes into it that you apply from the wall comes out of the heater. Now, we're going to make it simple and say that all of the electricity, the 1,000 watts that goes into this, 
comes out of the heater as heat. Now that's not strictly true because it might have an LED and there'll be a whole, so some of it is light energy and there'll be a whole bunch of potentially pedantic people going about infrared light and radiation, yada yada yada. We're going to take a simplistic view of these devices for now. So a heater is extremely easy. You bang in a thousand watts of electricity, you cannot get a thousand and one hundred watts out nor can you get 100 watts out. If you're putting in a thousand, you are getting a thousand out. And for simplicity's sake, if you're putting in a thousand watts of electricity, an oil heater like this, you are getting a thousand watts out of heat. Now let's move on to something slightly more complicated, the light bulb. Now we have a 100 watt light bulb we are putting in 100 watts of electricity, so we are getting out 100 watts of energy. All 100 watts is coming out. Now for a light bulb, part of that energy coming out is going to be light, and the rest of it is going to be coming out as heat. For an incandescent light bulb, the majority of it is actually coming out as heat. It doesn't matter if you've got a 10 watt light bulb, 100 watt, 1000 watt, or if you've got an LED light bulb or a fluorescent light bulb, all the electricity that is going into this light bulb is coming out of the light bulb. Now there's different efficiencies between the different kinds of light bulbs, but all of the energy going in is coming out. Now if we look at a TEC, things are a little bit complicated if we want to make them complicated. But for this video, we're just talking about conservation of energy. So if you are applying 200 watts of electricity via the power leads, you are getting 200 watts out. Now, if you have correctly cooled the TEC, the 200 watts used is coming out of the hot side. If it's not correctly cooled, you can some potentially can come back out of the cold side, but whatever. For our example, if this TEC is drawing 200 watts, um, 10 amps at 20 volts or whatever, then you will be expelling 200 watts out of the hot side. Now you will need to cool that additional 200 watts. So whatever you're cooling, like your CPU might be making 100 watts. If your TEC is drawing 200 watts, then your total heat load coming out of here is going to be 300 watts and you need to cool it. But back to conservation of energy, if this is drawing 200 watts, of electricity, 200 watts of energy is coming out, and the 200 watts of energy in a TEC is coming out as heat. It's not coming out as a light bulb, there's no light. So, for simplicity's sake, it's coming out as heat. Now, it's important to mention that we are talking about watts used, not Qmax. Qmax is the amount of heat which potentially can be moved from one side of the TEC to another. We're not talking about that. We're talking purely about the ele electricity that goes into the TEC. The input voltage and input amps comes out of the TEC, out of the hot side, as heat. Now, some people have unfortunately mentioned that they thought that the heat went up the electrical wires when you applied it. Uh, no, it does not. The Heat, well, they were actually referring to the heat moved actually went up the wires. Uh, no, that's not the case in a TEC where you're applying power to it. All energy is going into the TEC to move the heat and it comes out as heat. So that is conservation of energy and we're dealing with this statement here that TECs are two to ten percent efficient and I realize I'm going to lose friends and influence no one because of this TEC uh, series because I think the majority of people actually believe that this is based on fact 
which I cannot find any tangible facts which actually backs this statement up that a TEC is between 2 or 10 percent efficient. And hopefully by the end of this we'll realize that the efficiency can be far, far greater than 2 or 10 percent and also it can be far less than 2 or 10 percent. But, but don't set me on fire yet. Don't fly to New Zealand to burn down my house. At least wait till we've finished the series and hopefully I will have successfully explained why this statement is incorrect. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.